So, Joel Embiid and Marcus Smart both recently agreed to contract extension, $196 million contract, contract extension, which keeps him with the Sixers through the 2026-27 season. So, um, he's going to be there for a while. For a while, and obviously for the Sixers, this is great. He's a player who, you know, it gets to the part where to the point where you know, with some players, it's if the team is going to offer them the max contract, and with others, it's if the player will sign the max contract. And he's uh, definitely in the second category where the team is definitely going to offer it to him, and it's just whether he wants to sign it. And um, I think this is a vote of confidence by Embiid. I think the Sixers have probably earned that, um, uh, whether it's through earlier in his career, always believing in, in him, choosing him over Nerlens Noel and Jalil Okafor, and you know, a, putting a team around him where, yes, he hasn't made it to the Eastern Conference Finals, but they have been relatively com- competitive for his whole uh, playing career, um, whether it be in 2019, where they almost... Uh, made the conference finals if not for the Kawhi shot and could have won it all or uh, this recent year where they're the number one seed in the east um, so I think the Sixers have done an okay job now obviously their future is a bit unclear because of Ben Simmons but you know I think Embiid and I both trust that um, not that we're talking but you know what I mean like uh, we both individually trust that uh, Daryl Morey and um, the Sixers front office will make the right move in the Ben Simmons trade. Mainly it's Maury, not really the rest of the Sixers front office because uh, he is so driven down Daryl Morey to getting superstars. And I think, you know, if it's not Dame or Beal, um, he's willing to probably get uncomfortable and just keep Ben Simmons till one of those guys becomes available. So I think they will be able to uh, probably get good value for Ben Simmons. And you know, long term, I mean, you have Embiid, Tobias Harris overpaid, but still a good player. Ben Simmons or whatever you get back from for Ben Simmons. Uh, some young guys like Tyrese Maxey and Matisse Thibel. Uh Danny Green is still there. Seth Curry's there. I think the Sixers are definitely going to be in the hunt. I don't think they're in that top tier of championship contenders, but I think uh, they're they're in that tier below where you know they're going to be a top four seed they're going to probably win a first round playoff series and then after that uh, they might need some luck but you never know I think Embiid has been absolutely fantastic um, especially last year where if he didn't get injured he might have won MVP and even with him missing some games he finished second uh, averaged 28.5 points 10.5.6 rebounds and uh, 2.8 assists which um, it's just insane. I mean, the big thing was the shooting, which, you know, the jump shot was falling. And uh, when that ha- happens, he's really hard to guard. Um, his mid-rangers were going in. His three-pointers at, at about a 38% rate were going in. Um, his efficiency was great. He gets to the line a ton. Uh, 10.7 attempts a game last year. Shot 86%. So, you know, I think he's, de- he's definitely... Um, improved from last year and obviously that wasn't a great year but you know I think there is still some belief that he can uh, maybe even reach another gear um, you know because he did only start playing basketball at a later age so you'd think maybe he has a bit more development in him um, or maybe it just staying healthy and staying consistent I think you know offensively his, his skill set is great um, the one thing he could maybe improve on a little bit might be the passing um, which, you know, sometimes when he gets doubled or tripled, you know, sometimes he makes the right read, but sometimes he doesn't. He's also a force defensively. Uh, one steal, 1.4 blocks, uh, protects the rim, that sort of thing. So, yeah, um, this is great for the Sixers to get Embiid locked down. Um, he's the franchise cornerstone. And for Embiid, vote of confidence in the Sixers. And, you know, I think... Uh, he believes that they'll be able to put a competing team around him for really the whole contract. So yeah, um, that's the Embiid ex- extension. If I talk about Marcus Smart now, I think this one's maybe a bit more interesting just because, you know, the price and all that. So he signed a four-year, uh, $77 million extension. Um, so, you know, getting paid quite a bit, um, you know, about $17, $18 million a year if my math eight, eight what am i saying uh yeah like 18 million dollars a year um you know i think 
is Smart worth that? I mean, I think it just depends on uh, the defense, really, because uh, he's been a great defender his whole career, and then last year it slipped a tiny bit. Um, so you'd hope that he's able to get back there. Um, he's also only 27, so you know he still has uh, quite a bit of time. Like he's certainly not past his prime, even though he has taken quite a few hits and then you know just all the loose diving for loose balls and uh, all that. I think Smart sort of a tough player with the longevity because you don't want him risking no magic, but. If you tell him to stop doing that, then he, you sort of lose that fire and hustle, which you know can really motivate a team. And you know he always does something uh, crazy in late game situations, whether it's you know diving for a loose ball, getting a steal, uh, hitting a hard three. I mean, you know he is certainly someone who certainly impacts the game. Um, and sometimes it's great, and then sometimes. You know, he takes a shot that, you know, really wasn't the move. Uh, there was also a rumor that he's going to play a bit more point guard, which makes sense. Um, we'll have to see with Schroeder. But, you know, if they the Celtics roll out a lineup of Smart, Richardson, Tatum Brown, and Horford, that's pretty switchy. That's pretty good defensively. Uh, and then the big thing would just sort of be the, the shooting between Smart, Richardson, and Horford. I think, you know, if he's more of a playmaker, that could be a good thing. I think he's a good passer, average 5.7 assists a game. Um, I wouldn't call him a great passer, but I think makes the right reads most of the time. Um, yeah, the three-point shot, I mean, it's certainly up and down. 33% last year on six attempts. You know, maybe if he were to shoot a little bit less, that could be a good thing. Um you know, shot 10.6 times a game, you know, if he could just lower that to maybe uh, seven or eight, maybe that could be more beneficial to the Celtics um, between Tatum, Brown, Schroeder. Uh, those are the guys I think you want taking more shots than uh, Marcus Smart. If I think of the value of this contract, I mean, it's not a massive overpay, but I think it's a little overpay, which, you know, that's sort of the thing in the NBA. You have to remember the cap always goes up, so it might the his, his um you know 18 19 million dollars a year uh won't look up won't look as bad um in a few years because there'll be a lower percentage of the cap um and you know sometimes you have to overpay i think it's sort of better than having him on an expiring contract he's the type of player who sort of needs that security to play his play at his best um in terms of the diving for loose balls and you know what i mean but um, so yeah, I think he needs the security and uh, maybe a little bit of overpay is probably worth it if he can get back to what he was defensively two years ago, being an all defensive player, uh, being the leader and uh, the the engine behind the team. So yeah, um, yeah, that's I've said about all I have to say on the Smart and Embiid contracts. But anyways, thanks for watching this video, guys. Leave a like. Subscribe to this channel for more NBA content, and I'll see you guys next time.